Sorry, I keep doing that. Okay, so this webinar, uh, as I'm sure I would think you all know, uh, recently the government of Manitoba uh, has signed on to CELA and is providing funding for all public libraries in the province to participate in CELA. And sorry, I said I would stop my video so that wouldn't be a distraction. So the web, this webinar is really intended to give a basic overview of CELA service. So it's going to be going through things, but not in great detail. Uh, I'm going to outline the program, who's eligible for the service, what's available to your patrons with print disabilities, as well as to public libraries as CELA members. How do patrons register for the service at your library? How can you help promote CELA at your library and in your community? And where can you go for more information? And the next slide is basically just a kind of timeline for the way that we're bringing Manitoba libraries into CELA. So as you may have already noticed, we have been sending out email communications to Manitoba libraries from CELA member service, and we'll be doing that throughout May and June. We're offering these online introduction to CELA webinars that are required, and they're going to be offered again throughout May and June. We will be creating CELA ILL or interlibrary loan accounts for all Manitoba libraries by the end of June, which means that you won't really be equipped to start registering patrons until the beginning of July, because you'll need those ILL accounts in order to log in and register patrons for access. So as it says on the slide, Manitoba Library should be ready to offer service to patrons with print disabilities by the beginning of July. And if you haven't taken a look at the onboarding webpage, you'll find there information about the emails that we've sent out previously and a timeline for when various things are going to happen in the onboarding process. So you might want to take a look at that. Uh, and there's a link to that page at the bottom of the uh, PowerPoint slide. So just very briefly, in case some of you are not familiar with CELA, what is CELA, the Center for Equitable Library Access? So it's a national not-for-profit organization. It's run by a board of directors that's made up of representatives from public libraries across the country. And CELA's role is really to provide public libraries with accessible or alternate format collections for patrons with print disability, uh, print disability, sorry, and also to provide support for public library staff who are offering the CELA service in their community. CELA is funded by participating member libraries, participating provincial and territorial governments, and partners with organizations such as CNIB and other producers of library materials in alternative or accessible formats. So theoretically then, CELA has the capacity to serve the estimated 3 million Canadians who have a print disability. And one thing I should assure uh, people of right away, uh, there is no, your library will not be charged in any way for CELA service or materials uh, because the government of Manitoba has signed on, it is the government that is providing uh, the, the fees for CELA so that none of that will be charged at the level of the individual public libraries in Manitoba. So why is providing access to the CELA collection to your patrons important? I don't think, I, I probably don't need to talk about the importance of reading 
the profound difference that access to many different kinds of reading materials or information can have in a person's life. It's estimated that only about five to 7% of all material that's published in print in Canada is available in accessible formats for people who don't read or can't read regular print. So this is the main reason why broadening choices for this section of the population is an important step, we think, in the right direction. So what we hope is that participating in CELA will allow your library to increase the choices available to your library users who don't read regular print. So in addition to your library's already existing accessible format, collection that might include things like books in large print, commercially produced audio CDs, online audio services like OverDrive, for example. Through your membership in CELA, you can also provide access to the physical formats that are in CELA's collection, such as audiobooks on DAISY, what is called DAISY CD, Braille, and print braille books. Print braille books are basically children's picture books. So they have the print text, but in between each print page, they also have a plastic braille page. So you could have a blind parent or caregiver and a sighted child or vice versa, and they'd be able to read these books together. Your membership in CELA also provides access for your print disabled patrons to CELA's online library with access to books, newspapers, and magazines in audio, braille, and electronic text uh, format. So who benefits from CELA service? Well, as I mentioned, it's estimated that there are over 3 million Canadians with print disabilities that prevent them from reading conventional or traditional print. So that's about 10% of the population. A print disability is generally described as a disability that makes it difficult or impossible for a person to access standard text. So print disabilities include blindness or visual impairment, physical disabilities that make it hard to hold or turn the pages of a print book, or severe learning disabilities that make it difficult to process written text, or at least to process written text on its own. So the nature of the disability may vary, but the common thread for any person with a print disability is that he or she cannot access print in the way that most people do. So this is where the CELA collection comes in and hopefully can help serve that section of your library uh, membership. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about eligibility criteria. And what you see in front of you on that slide is a section from the Canadian Copyright Act. So it's this section in the Canadian Copyright Act that allows nonprofit organizations such as CELA to produce materials in accessible formats for people with perceptual or print disabilities. If you look at the uh, clause in the Canadian Copyright Act, they refer to perceptual disabilities. I'm mostly going to refer to them as print disabilities, but essentially it's the same thing. So the clause refers to visual disabilities that may result in blindness or partial sight, to physical disabilities such uh, things like severe arthritis, cerebral palsy, MS, any condition really that affects the fine motor skills. And the third category in the Canadian Copyright Act, it, they refer to people with an impairment relating to comprehension. So mostly this refers to various kinds of learning disabilities, such as dyslexia, as well as to some forms of autism and brain injuries. 
people who have temporary print disabilities are also eligible to access CELA service at your library while they're experiencing the temporary disability. So for example, you might have a library patron who's waiting for cataract surgery and they can't see well enough to read print while they're waiting for surgery or someone who's undergoing regular chemo treatments and maybe they're not strong enough to hold or turn the pages of print books during the period that they're undergoing the treatment. Or it could be a person who's had a stroke and they're undergoing rehab and maybe temporarily unable either to see or to hold a regular print book. Now, once you start signing people up for CELA service, you will see that CELA does not require a signed proof of disability form or a medical certificate. There's a section in the online CELA registration form that you'll be using as public library staff where the patron is simply asked to identify that they do have a print disability, whether it's a learning, a physical or a visual disability. So this is sufficient to give them access to CELA's collection and services. Now, um, through CELA, patrons can also, patrons and educators can also access book share titles at our website, celalibrary.ca. Bookshare is a US-based online library for people with print disabilities. So if you have a patron who also wants to access Bookshare titles at CELA Library, they do have to provide a signed POD or proof of disability form, which is available on the CELA website. And that's a requirement of uh, Bookshare. But if they're simply wanting to access uh, from books from CELA's collection, uh, there is no proof of disability required. Okay, so this next slide is just talking about who your patrons might be, who your <clears throat> CELA patrons could be. And probably the most important point about this slide is just that obviously you can't tell necessarily just from looking at a person that they have a print disability. It could be a person who borrows very heavily from your audiobook or large print collection, a person who has a lot of trouble holding or turning the pages of print books, someone who has to hold the books up very close to the face in order to read. It could also be a patron who mentions that they've just undergone eye surgery or that they're waiting for eye surgery. So it can be important to pay attention to clues like this that could indicate that the person has a print disability and might benefit from having access to CELA's accessible format collection. It's also a good idea, I think. Uh, we do have free promotional material that we'll be sending out to Manitoba libraries. And uh, we have a kind of large postcards or bookmarks that you can have on hand at your reference or information desk. This way, it will be easy for library staff to hand those out to friends or relatives of a person with a print disability or to the person themselves uh, who might be visiting the library. So I'm just going to stop for a moment just to make sure that everyone is still following. You can still hear me and see the slides and just see if there are any questions so far. <clears throat> and if you do have questions, as I said, please feel free to type those into the chat window. I'm just uh, taking a sip of water here. And don't feel shy about typing your questions into the into the chat window. You also don't need to wait for me to stop talking. So if you have a question while we're going through the slides, I'll be monitoring the chat window. So uh, please feel free, as I said, to type your question or comment into that uh, chat window. <clears throat> 
I should have also mentioned at the top of the webinar, I will be sending out a copy of the PowerPoint slides to everyone who's participating today with the notes, as well as a link to a SurveyMonkey evaluation. So you can just let us know um, how you liked the webinar or if there are any improvements that we could make. So uh, just in case, uh, you need to revisit some of the information. You'll have that later. Okay, so briefly, sort of in overview, what does SELA offer your library as a member library? We try and offer member libraries flexible options for service delivery, and those include registration of patrons for direct service from SELA. And by this, I mean, by direct service, I mean either home delivery. So if a person is going to be requesting physical formats from SELA, like books on CD or Braille books, uh, you can register them and the material will be delivered post-free to their home address. Also, if patrons want access to the online library, uh, you would register them for direct service. We also provide what are called DAISY deposit collections. So DAISY deposit collections are basically books on DAISY CD that are offered to the library on long-term loan. So there's no cost for this. All of this is part of your SELA membership. It gives you a browsable collection for your patrons when they visit the library. So it will allow them to browse uh, the collection and actually leave with uh, CDs in hand. All SELA member libraries also have an ILL or interlibrary loan account. And as I said, we'll be setting those up for Manitoba libraries around the end of June. So through your interlibrary loan account, you're able to borrow up to 2000 items in any of SELA's accessible formats for your patrons with print disabilities. So that includes the physical formats that we would mail out. So books on DAISY, CD, Braille, and print Braille books. Uh, if you're requesting physical items for patrons with print disabilities, sometimes libraries will deliver these items to the patron as part of a homebound service or the patron can pick them up at the library. And your interlibrary loan account also gives you full access to SELA's online resources. So books that can be downloaded from the SELA website. And after we've gone through the slides, I'm hoping we'll have enough time. I'd like to just go to the SELA website for the last part of the webinar, just to walk you through some of what's available through the website. SELA offers support for community outreach and reading programs. So libraries are able to request multiple copies of book club books, community reads, or award-winning titles, uh, things like the Governor General Award books, Canada Reads, kids programs like the Ontario Library Association Forest of Reading. SELA offers training and accessibility expertise. So we offer monthly training webinars on a variety of topics like the one that we're doing today. Most of these webinars are also available in recorded version on the SELA website because library staff aren't always able to attend webinars if they have scheduling conflicts. SELA's collection and services are offered in English and French. So SELA's collection is a bilingual collection. Just a note that there are some titles available in other languages from the Bookshare collection. <clears throat> so if you have patrons who read languages other than English and French, they might be interested in seeing what's available from Bookshare and if there are books there in uh, a language that they uh, that they read. As a SELA member library, you can also access your SELA circulation and registration statistics. I mean, obviously you won't have any <clears throat> when the program is launched, but eventually. 
you simply log in to your ILL, your interlibrary loan account at our website, and you're able to view those statistics. So that's sort of a quick overview of what's available to you as a public library. So what does CELA offer your patrons? First of all, their choice of formats, which includes books in audio, braille, and e-text or electronic text. CELA's is a growing collection. Currently, there are over 1 million items available for all ages and interests, and that includes access to Bookshare titles, as I've mentioned before. There's a broad selection of genres in the CELA collection. It's probably quite similar to the selection that you might find in a mid-sized public library. So fiction, nonfiction, poetry, children's, YA titles, business, self-help. We also have a um, fairly large uh, selection in popular genre fiction. So things like mysteries, romance, historical fiction, uh, westerns, etc. Patrons who are receiving CELA service can also subscribe to CELA's Daisy magazines in either audio or text format, and they can receive new issues automatically if they're using a mobile device or an internet enabled DAISY player through what's one of our formats, which is called direct to player. CELA's uh, DAISY text magazine collection includes 150 full text accessible magazines which makes these magazines accessible and available as soon as they're published in print. So titles include things like Canadian Living, The Economist, Elle, Sejour, Popular Science, among many others. So magazines are available again in English and French. CELA also offers audio magazines on DAISY CD for patrons who don't have internet access who, or who aren't comfortable downloading things in an online situation. So these patrons can subscribe to either, there is an English Daisy Magazine CD that has about six magazines on it. There's also a French Daisy Magazine CD. And those Daisy Magazine CDs are published and sent out every two months. So as I've mentioned, uh, your patrons will also have access to Bookshare titles via the CELA website. Bookshare is the world's largest online library of accessible reading materials. So Bookshare makes arrangements with publishers to obtain new releases and back catalogs of their works. Bookshare books can be downloaded to a computer to a mobile device like a smartphone or a tablet, or for people who read Braille uh, to an electronic Braille display. Bookshare's catalog is rapidly expanding and all CELA members have access to Bookshare titles once they provide that proof of disability form that I mentioned, which is available on the CELA website. <clears throat> One important thing to note about Bookshare, just for your patrons, any audio from Bookshare will be in synthetic or computer generated speech. Some patrons don't like listening to synthetic speech, although it has gotten, it has improved a lot in the last few years. Most audio from CELA or in CELA's collection is in human narrated audio. So that's something to be aware of. But for those patrons who don't mind listening to synthetic speech, having access to Bookshare titles will open up a lot more content to them. So it means that your patrons can, you know, either download or get home delivery of physical format. So they have those two options.
So in terms of easier ways to get audiobooks, I've mentioned direct to player. So direct to player, basically it allows patrons or libraries to transfer DAISY audiobooks directly from SELA's website onto a player or a mobile device without having to wait for a CD in the mail or without having to download the file to a computer and then transfer it to a listening device. Some SELA member libraries in other places are using the direct to player option. What it means is the library has to have internet enabled DAISY players, which can be purchased from vendors of uh, accessible technology in Canada. Once the library has an internet enabled player, you would contact us at SELA member services. We would create a direct to player account for the library. This might be a good option to assist patrons who maybe aren't comfortable using a computer or downloading their own audiobooks from the online library. So libraries can load up to 12 books on the player at one time through automatic selection. Of course, patrons can also purchase, and many patrons do, purchase their own DAISY players. They will need wireless access to use direct to player but they won't have to download the books first onto a computer. Basically, the books, as I mentioned, will transfer directly from the SELA website to the player. And to return the books, all the patron has to do is push a button and the book is automatically removed from the player. So in terms of using that format direct to player. So you can use it with an internet enabled DAISY player. So that picture on the bottom right of the PowerPoint slide, that's a DAISY player. Any DAISY players, any new ones or any players that have been manufactured within the last three or four years are all internet enabled. So it means you could use that player to listen to physical DAISY CDs or any kind of CD, but you can also use them to get downloadable audio formats. Also, there are accessible reading apps. There's a free accessible app that's called Dolphin Easy Reader and libraries or patrons can download the app onto a tablet or a smartphone. So if you were in a library and you wanted to demo the Dolphin Easy Reader with Seal of Books, uh, you could do that. So one of the difficulties or one of the challenges I, th I think with um, SELA is trying to uh, sort of get the word out to people in your community who could benefit from access to the service. So we have developed some programs to try and help libraries do outreach to teachers and other professionals in your community who basically assist individuals with print disabilities to get the library service that they want. So I'm just gonna talk about a couple of these programs. One of them is called Educator Access and the other one is Client Access Support. So Educator Access, it's basically a free sign up for teachers at the elementary, secondary, and post-secondary levels. They have, they have to have a valid public library card from a Manitoba library. It gives the teachers access to SELA's collection, so both the online and the physical formats for any of their students with print disabilities. And uh, teachers are also able to access Bookshare titles directly from celalibrary.ca, again, on behalf of students with print disabilities. Again, they have to provide what's called an educator access terms of use form, which is again, a requirement of Bookshare. But once they've filled that out, it's basically just their name, their work email address and their signature, they will have access to Bookshare titles as well. So client access support is the same idea. It's a free sign up for professionals 
other than teachers at public institutions who are assisting people with print disabilities to access library service with a valid public library card from a CELA member library, in other words, from any public library in Manitoba. So some of the professionals that would be eligible to access this program, uh, recreational and rehabilitation therapists, private tutors, personal support workers, uh, workers in senior centers or long-term care facilities, those kind of uh, people. So again, if once they sign up for client access support and the forms are all available on the CELA website, they would get free access to CELA's physical format and online collect, uh, collection for any people or persons they're assisting who have a print disability. So how do library patrons sign up? So basically you as a public library staff person can register eligible patrons by completing the online CELA registration form. And we'll look at the registration page uh, when we go to the website in a couple of minutes. Uh, it's a good idea. It depends on the size of the library and how you're going to handle CELA registrations. As I mentioned, Manitoba libraries, you won't be in a position to be able to register patrons until we create the ILL accounts for Manitoba libraries, which will happen around the end of June. So basically, public library staff can register patrons by filling out the online registration form. And it may be that you're going to centralize CELA registration to one staff person, or if you're a larger library, maybe to one branch. The form itself probably takes about 10 to 15 minutes to complete with the patron, and it could be done obviously in person or over the phone. So all you would need to do to register a patron is to log in to your library's ILL, your CELA interlibrary loan account at CELA's website. And when we go to the registration page, you'll see that we have a guide for registering library patrons for CELA for public library staff, as well as other helpful documents that can help you in the registration process. Patrons may prefer to complete the self registration form so they can register themselves independently if they prefer to register this way. They do need a valid public library card from your library in order to complete the registration form because CELA is offered via the public library uh, system. So they wouldn't be able to sign up with CELA until they first get a public library card from your library. And you can find both of these forms on the registration page which there's a link to it right here at the bottom of, the, uh, of this slide. One other thing about uh, registrations. So as we've talked about, any person with a print disability, that means it could be a physical, a visual, or a learning disability, is eligible to register for CELA service from your library. To help uh, with uh, CNIB clients, so these would all be people with visual disabilities of some kind, <clears throat> CNIB staff or vision loss rehabilitation staff will be referring people with visual disabilities, so people who are blind or partially sighted, they'll be referring uh, those people to us and we'll then be sending public libraries emails uh, with information, with contact information for the CNIB client who's requesting to be signed up for library service and for CELA. So you will start getting emails, not until July, from us about uh, CNIB clients who are interested in having you contact them and being signed up for your library service and then 
for Sela. And we will have gotten permission from the client to share their contact information with the public library. So what happens after a person is registered for Sela? So either a public library staff person has completed the online registration form or the patron themselves has completed the self registration form. So that form goes to what's called SELA's contact center. And once SELA's contact center staff receive the registration form, if the person has indicated in the form that they want online service, we send them their username, which is basically their six digit SELA account number and password via email. If the person is requesting direct to player, so that's the service where the book is transferred directly from the website onto their device. Or if they're asking for DAISY CD service by mail, we send them two popular starter books, one fiction and one nonfiction title, as well as a DAISY audio magazine CD. We also send them a welcome message, usually via email if they have email. And in the message, it explains how they can order more books online or how they can get in touch with the contact center if they want us to set up what's called automatic selection, where um, books are sent out automatically depending on the person's reading interests. If the person who's being registered uh, is a child, so anyone 16 and under, or a Braille user, once we get that, those registration forms, contact center staff will, will get in touch with them directly because it's a bit more complex to set up their SELA account. So that's essentially the way that registration works. Now, obviously, you know, once you actually start registering people, you'll, you'll get a bit more familiar with the process, but I think it is relatively straightforward. So one of the goals, obviously, is to try and integrate SELA into your library and to get staff more involved with SELA and make the service a success. So these are just some suggestions. You might include information about SELA in all aspects of your service, your training and outreach. You could start by considering all aspects of your public service. So you might promote SELA service on your library website. You could include a link to the SELA self-registration form for patrons who might want to register independently for the service. We've heard from libraries that it can help to put the SELA brochures or postcards near where you shelve your audiobooks as well as at information desks. All SELA patrons require a public library card in order to get SELA service. So making the process of getting a card remotely easier will make it easier for patrons with print disabilities who may also have other mobility related difficulties, which can make it harder for them to actually come in physically to the library. In terms of how to get your staff more involved with SELA, we do offer frequent online webinars that you can sign up for or you can watch recorded versions on our website. We try and add new webinars to the roster regularly. So for example, <clears throat> some fairly recent new webinars include one on various kinds of accessible reading technologies. We also have webinars on assisting patrons with visual disabilities or patrons with learning disabilities. Many libraries are adopting a more inclusive approach to service. So you can make it easy to support patrons by having your SELA login information on hand. So staff are able to order books through SELA and also to register patrons. 
you might consider subscribing to Open Book for Libraries, which is CELA's monthly e-newsletter for news about great books, accessible reading, and more. And um, as I mentioned, outreach is a vital part of this. So you can order free CELA promotional materials, and we will actually be sending out free promotional materials to Manitoba libraries, but there's the link if you want to take a look at what's available. The promotional materials are available in English and French. So there are basically three types of promotional materials. There is the bookmarks that I mentioned for general outreach and information about CELA. Specific educator access flyers, if you're using them for school visits or outreach to students and teachers. Also, there are specific client access support flyers. If you're trying to get in touch with professionals, uh, people like a personal support worker, staff in rehabilitation centers or senior centers or long-term care organizations. Doing outreach in the community is, I think, something that a lot of libraries have become experts at. So you might think about places where you're likely to meet people who could use the service. I know that probably the pandemic is making that kind of outreach a bit more difficult, but things like schools, colleges, universities, disability organizations, such as learning disability organizations, arthritis societies, senior centers, long-term care facilities. If you happen to have a CNIB office in your community or near your community. The next time you're organizing a book club for community members, you might think about advertising it as an accessible book club so that people who don't read print would also be able to participate. I know that there is currently uh, a book club in Manitoba um, I'm not sure who, I think it might be run by a volunteer from CNIB, but it's basically about eight or 10 people who, this club has been going for a long time. So they get in touch with CELA when they want a new title, and then we send out multiple copies. Well, I see there's a question. So... Shannon, I'm located in northern Manitoba. We have two campus libraries. So um, CELA is basically available to public libraries. That's the way it's set out. But if you, for example, at the campus libraries, if there, uh, the, anyone who's associated with a post-secondary institution, would be able to, as long as they're assisting students with print disabilities, they'd be able to sign up for an educator access account, and that would give them access to CELA's resources. So I, I'm not sure if that answers the question or not, but in terms of membership, uh, essentially public libraries are, are the libraries that can, uh, can get membership in CELA. So yeah, I was talking about book clubs. So yes, uh, there is a recorded webinar on the CELA website that you can take a look at or listen to. It's called Making Book Clubs Accessible. And it's a webinar that was done by Jane Beaumont, who's a librarian who's been involved in setting up accessible book clubs in the Ottawa area. So the transcript and the audio from the webinar is posted on the webinars and teleconferences section of our website. And we're going to be looking at that uh, in a moment. We're almost at the end of the slides here, which is good because I did want to take a few minutes and look at the website. So obviously, the first place to go is celalibrary.ca, our website. So you'll find more information, more detailed information about everything that we've only been able to cover you know, very quickly today. So the registration forms, collection highlights, 
how to download and borrow books. We have a whole set of tutorials. You can, once you're up and running with CELA, you'll be able to access your statistics. And as I mentioned, if you want to subscribe to Open Book for Libraries, you can do that. Just one more slide, and then we'll go to the website. So in terms of questions, if you're wondering how to direct questions from CELA library patrons, so these would be people that you've already registered for CELA service, you can let them know that they can get in touch with CELA's contact center anytime at their toll-free number or by email at help at celalibrary.ca. So they might have questions about, for example, how to change the kind of books they're getting, maybe they're not happy with them, how to set up a new service like direct to player, <clears throat> or if they have any questions about the various reading technologies that they're using. If you're a public library staff person and you have questions about CELA, you should get in touch with us, the team at CELA member services directly. We have the same toll-free number, you just press two to get to us. And that's our email address, members at celalibrary.ca. And CELA member services staff are available from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. Obviously, you can also send an email or leave a voicemail message. And in general, uh, CELA member services staff try to get back to libraries within 24 hours. But if you have questions now, you don't have to wait until Manitoba libraries are fully on board with CELA. You can call us or email us at any time if you have questions. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is just uh, get out of the PowerPoint and go to the CELA website. So can everyone see the website? It's, uh, this is the main page, the home page. Um, if someone can just let me know just by, uh, you know, typing a yes into the chat. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so I'm on the home page. So once we've created your library's ILL account, the first thing you're going to want to do probably is log in. <clears throat> so each library will have a six digit CELA account number. So I'm typing in my account number and password. And you'll know you're signed in because of this message on the top left hand there, either welcome <clears throat> the name of the library or welcome with your six digit CELA account number. So I just wanna go quickly over some of the things that we talked about so that maybe you'll be able to find information later on. So the four libraries section, that's a good section to start with. It's information for CELA member libraries. So I mentioned training. This is where you go to sign up for a webinar. And there'll be the listings for upcoming webinars. So the person who asked about educator access, this might be a good webinar to attend because it will give you more information about how teachers uh, and other educators can sign up for educator access. I also mentioned, I'll just go back one, that we do try and record most of the webinars that we offer because lots of times staff aren't able to attend necessarily. So we do have some helpful videos, how to talk to your library patrons about CELA. Dolphin Easy Reader is that free accessible reading app that you can download to a mobile device, uh, to a tablet, also to a desktop how to register a library patron for CELA, but this is where you'll find the recorded webinars. So uh, let's see here. This is the one I mentioned, th this uh, webinar all about reading disabilities, how libraries can support readers with dyslexia. This was given by the executive director of Dyslexia Canada. This is the webinar about how to create accessible book clubs. There's a webinar on accessible publishing in Canada. So yeah, that's also a helpful page. So I'm going to go back again to the four libraries section. 
So we talked about deposit collection. So once you're set up, your library may be interested in requesting a deposit collection, which is just a bulk shipment of DAISY books on CD. So it gives you a collection that you can house in the library and it's refreshable every six or every 12 months. The, the books are the libraries to keep on long-term loan. And the picture that you're looking at here is just, uh, this is a deposit collection at Oakville Public Library in near Toronto. So, so if you're interested in requesting a, a DAISY deposit collection, you would just fill out the form with your library information. Do you want books every six or every 12 months? Do you want any of the collection in French? And then you choose general categories, both fiction and nonfiction, and we set up the deposit profile. Normally, if you request a deposit collection, you should get the books within uh, two to three weeks. So let's see. So we talked about printed promotional materials that are available free of charge from CELA to help you if you're doing outreach, either in the library or in the community. So you can take a look at them. This is the CELA bookmark that I was referring to. There's also a flyer, whoops, for the client access support program and for the educator access program. And as I mentioned, we will be setting, sending out sets of promotional material to libraries in Manitoba. Also, um, on, so, so again, we're back to the welcome page. This is the register section. So as I mentioned, there's two ways for people to register. If the person wants to, do a self-registration form, the patron they would choose here. But if you're going to be registering someone as a public library staff person, you would select patron registration for use by public library staff. It brings up the registration page. As I mentioned, there are some helpful documents, a guide for registering library patrons for CELA. If you want a little, um, sort of <clears throat> uh, short form description of what accessible formats are offered by CELA. So when you're ready to register the person, now it won't work for me because I'm not a public library yet, so it won't give me access. But that's where you would go to that register tab to find information out about all things, you know, do, having to do with registration for CELA. The help tab is also useful. It has some training videos. It has a section on what are the accessible formats available through CELA and Bookshare. And that can be helpful. So for example, if you wanted to know a little bit more about print braille books, it will describe what they are. So children's picture books, print braille books must be returned after six weeks as we have limited copies of each book. And any books that, or any materials that are sent to you or that you send back to us are all sent post-free uh, via Canada Post. Also, so I'm scrolling back up here. I'll go back to the main page. And then I'll go to the help tab. So I mentioned that there are also a large, you know, there's a good number of tutorials for specific things. So how to download books. There's a section on CELA's magazines and newspapers. So downloading books, how to get a direct to player book from CELA's website how to download a DAISY book to your computer or onto a mobile 
if you're then you would need one of the accessible reading apps like easy reader so they're all step by step uh, tutorials. How to subscribe to a magazine, how to download and read a daisy text magazine, etc. So I know this is probably an overload of information and you don't have to take all this in at this, you know, in this one session. It's something that it might be a good idea to spend time going through some of what's available. So let's say you did want to get you're ordering a book um, on behalf of one of your patrons. I'm just going to take Margaret Atwood because I know we have. So if I click on search and I'm going to say don't apply my saved search preferences. So normally you'll get, so you have 183 items and you'll notice on the left hand side, it's possible to filter or to narrow your search down. So let's say you only want to see SELA titles. You only want to see books in English. There are other filters that you can use. So formats, if you're only looking for a specific format like DAISY Audio, Braille, et cetera. You can also filter according to the language, or sorry, the uh, age group. So if I only want to see adult titles, so if you wanted to place, if you wanted to actually receive, let's say you have a patron who's requested a title by Margaret Atwood. So I'm logged in just as you would be into your ILL account. So underneath each description, there's, it asks you to choose a format. So let's say you wanted to get an actual physical DAISY CD. You click on get it. And it says the item has been added to your holds list, view your holds in my account. But as a library, you can also get access to any of the downloadable formats. So I'm also placing a hold on the direct to player format. It says uh, the item has been added to your bookshelf and will be available shortly. View your bookshelf in my account. So if I go up to the top to my account, Holds are basically anything that is a physical format, like a braille, a physical braille book, a print braille children's picture book, or books on CD. Those would all be, that's where the hold would go. So you see the hold that I just placed is there. I'm actually going to cancel it because I don't want to have it delivered. And it will ask me to make sure that I want to remove it, and I do. When you're placing holds on Daisy on books on CD, normally you'll get them within a few days because it's essentially a burn on demand system. And the, the CDs are sent out in yellow resealable envelopes, and you would send them back to SELA the same way, no postage required. But I also placed a hold on the direct to player version. So here's the direct to player bookshelf. Now it may not be there yet. When you're play and it's not there yet. When you're placing holds on uh, online or downloadable formats, it can take a few minutes before they appear on your bookshelf. So probably if I went back in uh, two or three minutes, the book would be there. And then of course, I'd have to have some device that I was using to listen to that direct to player book. So it could be, I, I have the uh, easy reader app on my Android phone. So I could listen to it that way. If I had a tablet, you could also download it to a tablet. If you have an internet enabled Daisy player, you could also, get the direct to player format onto your uh, DAISY player. So maybe uh, I, I'll, st I'll stop talking. I've talked for quite a while. And I'll just see before we, uh, before we call it a day, if there are any questions. And no question is too basic. If there's anything I've skipped over that doesn't make sense to you, uh, please feel free to, to type your question into the chat window. Yeah, so Dolphin Reader, Dolphin Easy Reader is an app. 
So any app that you use, it's so let's say I, I've downloaded a book from Sila um, <clears throat> and I'm going to be reading it on my phone. It will depend. So for example, if I downloaded a Bookshare title and I was using the app, because all Bookshare is synthetic speech, it means that when I'm listening to it, it's going to be read out with synthetic speech. If I download a DAISY audio that is human voice narrated, it will be human voice narration. So it depends on your source material. But for example, if you're listening to one of the DAISY text magazines, because it's not an audio format, it's a text format. When you're, when, if you're downloading an article from one of our DAISY text magazines, because that isn't an audio format, yes, it would be read using whatever the synthetic voice is on your device. And usually with most devices, you have an op you have options for choosing voices. Some people prefer listening to male voices uh, or certain accents. So often there is uh, you get a certain amount of choice in terms of the voices. But yes, it would be synthetic speech if it's a a Daisy text format. I don't know if that makes sense, Jean. But if I was downloading a Daisy book from Sela that was recorded using human voice narration, when I listen to it on my phone with the Easy Reader app, it's also going to be human voice narration. Okay, any other questions? Now I know, as I said, this is a lot of information to try and take in in one session. So, uh, please do feel free to contact us anytime that you have a question or you need some help understanding anything about what's on the website and we're, we'd be more than happy uh, to talk to talk you through uh, the info you're looking for. I will send, as I said, I will send the PowerPoint slides to everyone here with the notes, so that might help. And I'm also going to send a link to a SurveyMonkey evaluation. So if you have a minute or two to fill out the SurveyMonkey evaluation, it just helps us to try and continuously improve uh, the uh, webinars. So I'm going to stop.